every day the cost of living goes up, but your income remains the same. And this is forcing lots of people into some pretty difficult choices. In this video, I'm going to share with you some secret things that you can do to save an enormous amount of money and help break you free of this dizzying cycle. Isn't that clever? Dizzying. <laughs> Stick around. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In today's world, there are so many people who are feeling forced to choose between, you know, do I pay for food or do I pay for my medication? Do I pay for my medication or do I pay for rent? There are a lot of people who are feeling that their cost of living is outpacing their ability to pay for that. And that's putting a lot of people in a position where they feel like they're having to make some hard choices. In today's video, what we're going to talk about are things that you think that you probably have to pay for that you, A, maybe don't even need it all, or B, can probably get for free. Now, not all of these things are going to apply to everyone, but I bet there's some things in here that apply to you, and especially the types of things that are month after month after month costs. At the end of the year, you're going to be saving hundreds, if not thousands of dollars by, instead of paying for these things, getting them for free or realizing that you didn't need them in the first place. So we're going to go through kind of a list of all these different things, uh, but I will, first I want to start with books. The last video that I made before this one, here's a link to it if you want to check it out, was about two books that I felt were really important. If I got cut off from in the internet and I wanted to have access to survival information, there were two books that I felt were really important to, to have in your own personal library. And that was something that I suggested people might want to spend money on. But books are another thing that you don't always have to spend money on. And in fact, at the end of this video, what I'm going to be doing is sharing a a whole ton of books that I just 10, 10 minutes ago got for free. And this is a resource that is available to all of us all across the United States. Uh, you can definitely tap this to get a, to build a huge library for yourself of all sorts of information and skills and entertainment reading for free. Books can cost a lot, awful lot of money, but they don't have to. So let's start uh, with things that you know you may think that you need that you don't need, or things that you can get for free. We're going to start like kind of with your body. Start right at the top with your hair. One thing that I think a lot of people have just uh, accepted that it's something that you know everybody's got to buy this is shampoo. I haven't used shampoo in forever. I can't remember the last time that I used shampoo. Uh, no, that might, this isn't smell of vision, so you can't take like a, like a smell test in my head, but I assure you I have, uh, you know, there's no sort of like aroma that, that comes off my head. Uh, I can't speak for people who have long hair. I think if you have long hair, it might be a kind of a different situation, but if you've got short hair like me, just going into the shower with hot water and kind of scrubbing your head off. I mean, you don't have to like go crazy about it or anything like that. Just kind of wash you know, through your, uh, you know, your fingers through your, your hair, just the hot water itself is going to, it would appear, rinse everything out of your, your head. I don't have lice. I don't have any kind of like weird, you know, scalp issues or anything like that or dandruff or, or, or any kind of issue along those lines. I think the shampoo is one of those things that, I don't know when people really started using it, but it seems like it's not something that you really need. And when you use shampoo, you end up stripping a lot of the natural oils out of your, uh, you know, your skin and your hair up there. And you have to replace those with something else that you didn't need to buy in the first place, which is conditioner. Conditioner is something that I think a lot of people just take for granted that that's like, well, I need to buy shampoo. I need to buy conditioner. And... You really don't. If you don't use the shampoo, you don't need the conditioner to try to repair the damage that the shampoo did in the first place. Again, I can't count, comment on people who have long hair, but for people with short hair, it seems to work totally, totally fine. I'm not the only one that does this. Many, many people do this and it works just fine. I do use soap on the rest of my body and I know that there are a lot of people who don't do that. They just kind of wash off with water. That's not something that I personally do, but that would be another way that a lot of people advocate for uh, you know, having healthier skin because uh, it's it allegedly is supposed to uh, promote a healthier skin ecology if you're not using soap. It just never is something that I got into. And that is one thing that I want to mention. If you're watching a video like this, it doesn't always have to be all or nothing. If you want to try some things that a host on YouTube says, but not all of them, that's totally fine. You know, it, you, 
There's no problem with that at all. I think a lot of people will feel like, well, if they disagree with one thing that somebody says, it's like everything that person says must be crap or it must not be applicable to me. You can try just one of these things and see if they work for you. Uh, the one thing I would su uh, suggest about shampoo is there is a bit of a, a break-in period uh, where like your body is used to you constantly stripping the oils out of the top of your head. And once you stop stripping the oils out, your body is going to continue to do the compensation types of things that it had been doing uh, to try to make up for the fact that you're stripping those oils out. So there might be a little bit of a rebound balancing period, uh, you know, at the beginning there where maybe your head is going to feel a little bit uh, more on the oily side. But as long as you're taking daily showers in hot water, it's going to be totally, totally fine. Okay, so that's two things. Shampoo and conditioning you can probably do without. I mentioned that it works better if you have short hair and getting haircuts is another thing that I think a lot of people take for granted. You have to go someplace else and pay X number of dollars. I don't know what that X is because I haven't gotten my hair cut professionally in quite a long time. Can you tell? Maybe you can, maybe you can't, I don't know. But I cut my own hair and uh, the benefits of cutting your own hair, not only are that you're saving money, uh, you know, you have to buy the tools uh, initially to do it. And I'll talk a little bit about the tools that I use in a moment. You have to buy the tools, but uh, you very, very quickly uh, make up for, um, you know, that cost by not going to a barber or a hairdresser. Uh, you know, and uh, you can save an enormous amount of money that way. Uh, another nice thing, uh, is also that if you can cut your own hair, you can kind of do it whenever you feel like you want to have your hair cut. You don't have to be like, oh, my hair's starting to feel long. I need to like schedule in advance or I, you know, I forgot to schedule at a hair cutting appointment and you know, they, they're booked and they can't take me or whatever. I, I know some places just walk in. <laughs> I obviously probably sound kind of green about this because I don't really, inter I haven't interacted with hairdressers in, in forever. Uh, but uh, you know, you can do it whenever you want. It could be like, you know, 10 o'clock at night and you're like, ah, I just feel like I want to cut my hair. And you can, you don't have to wait till the next day to go to the barber or anything like that. So that's kind of a nice uh, benefit. There's the two different tools that I tend to use for, for cutting my hair. One is those little uh, buzzers that people use, uh, you know, to cut their hair really short. And I actually use that on my facial hair. I don't buy razors, which brings me to another uh, thing that you don't have to spend money on is razor blades. I don't buy razor blades. Uh, be a couple of reasons. One, I never like the feeling of cutting all the hair and having the hair drop below my skin surface and then having the hair grow back out again. I felt I felt that, that was just uncomfortable. So I just started buzzing uh, the hair off and leaving a little bit of it. It just leaves a little bit of stubble. And that way you never kind of feel that re-emerging uh, feeling of the, the hair kind of pushing its way back through the skin. Uh, the other thing is that razor blades are really expensive. And if you use a buzzer, those buzzers last for years and years and years and years. Uh, and the other great thing is you can take that buzzer and you can use it for the rest of your head. Uh, they have attachments on them and I do the side of my head with a three quarter uh, I'm sorry, three eighths inch uh, attachment on the side. And for the top of my head, there's two different ways you can do that. One uses that kind of buzzer tool. And what I do for that is I just take my fingers and put them through my hair and get the hair kind of sticking up. And then I use an attachment and just kind of grab that. Uh, the reason I do that instead of just trying to get a super long attachment and putting it through my head uh, that way is because uh, a really long attachment on those buzzers just doesn't work very well. The hair kind of just kind of clumps up and gets pushed around. So if you kind of grab the hair and hold it short, and then you can use one of the shorter attachments, yeah, you can get it that way. But an even easier way to do it, and this does require a little bit of a uh, little bit of investment, is the Flowbee hair cutting system. I grew up back in the 80s, and these things were advertised all over television. It was kind of like like sort of a joke that it was just like it's a vacuum cleaner that uh, you know you, you attach these blades to, and it, it cuts your hair. Uh, it was kind of like a joke for like. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try to be politically correct. It was for like for Southern rednecks was the idea. It's like, oh, Southern rednecks using this hair cutting system. But they were a lot smarter than the rest of us, all the people that did, because it works really, really well. And there's no mess at all. If you're using the buzzer, you have like, you know, it gets on your shoulders and gets, uh, you know, in your the area where you're working. When you have a vacuum cleaner and it's sucking the hair up as you're doing it, there's zero mess. It actually feels kind of nice, especially in the summer if you're a little bit sweaty and you put this attachment up to your head, like the wind's all going through and it makes you feel kind of cool and like there's no mess at all. So I've been using the Floby hair cutting system, but the only reason that I bought that was because I wanted to be able to cut my boy's hair and I felt it'd be more pleasant for him, uh, you know, uh, with him growing up and me cutting his hair that way. Uh, so that's the reason I bought it. It, it. At the time of this recording, I think it cost about $120 for that setup. But if you're paying like 20 bucks a pop for a haircut, you know, that's like six haircuts and it's paid for itself. So I, I would highly recommend that if you want to put the money in, but you don't need that. Uh, you know, you can, can just do it with scissors or you can do it with a buzzer. There's all different, uh, you know, options for that. But everything up here, you can spend an awful lot less money per year taking care of your hair. Let's talk about uh, like going a little bit further down your body, your clothing. One thing that I have not owned for, I don't know, a decade or so is a clothes dryer. Uh, and I know the first thing you're going to be saying is like, well, what happens when I want to dry my clothes in the winter? Or what happens when I want to dry my clothes and it's raining out? Well, here in New England, uh, 
we get winters and it still works and it is well, it's raining today, even. <laughs> and uh, we have a, a reputation for being kind of hot. We call it muggy here. Uh, the air is oftentimes very humid. Uh, that's why we have so many bugs and insects out here. It's a, uh, it's a it's a damp part of the country. Not like as much as the Pacific Northwest, perhaps. But we have our share of, of dampness out here. And it still works totally fine. There's multiple ways you can dry your clothes if you don't own a clothes dryer. Uh, and... Uh, one of them is hang them outside on a clothesline, and I used to do that for years. And even in the winter time, you'd take like your, your blue jeans and you put them on the clothesline and they would freeze like a board. And then after about two, three days, the, uh, the ice in them would uh, sublimate right out into the air and things would be dry. Things will still dry in the winter time, but you don't even have to bring the stuff outside. You can dry the stuff inside. And that's really what we're doing now at our new house. I never was able to find a really good place to put an outside clothesline up. And I'm glad that we didn't because it's worked out really, really well just drying the clothes in the house. We use uh, these little fold out uh, wooden uh, clothes drying racks and they work really, really great. And for most people's houses, especially in the winter time, there's actually a humidity deficit where people are, you know, they might be getting like uh, bloody noses. That's why a lot of people tend to get colds and flus in the winter season. Uh, you know, one reason is because you're, you're inside more with people. And, uh, you know, if you believe in things like germs and, you know, breathing in people's uh, spit particles and the idea that that can cause disease, I, you know, if you don't, I don't know what the heck, is just magic that causes disease? Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. But, um, you know, if you believe in such things, uh, having more humidity in your house is going to keep your uh, nasal membranes uh, less dry, less cracked, and it will potentially uh, help you to uh, avoid more colds and flus. Now, I mean, you can't just do that as medicine and that's the end of it. You'll never get a cold and flu a anymore, but it's one step helping in the right direction among many other things that you can do. Uh, and on top of that, you're going to save money because A, you don't have to buy a clothes dryer and they get, you know, they're, they're fairly expensive, expensive, several hundred dollars. But more importantly, you don't have to run the power into those. And those things are power hogs, whether it's using electricity or gas, they use an awful lot of energy to do something that will happen naturally for free if you just hang the clothes around your house. And the side effect of that is that you are getting humidity into your house, uh, you know, during times when you need it. And if it's summertime, you just have the windows open and, you know, it, it, it's no problem either way. So that's another way you can save a ton of money by not buying the machine. And on top of that, you're going to save money week after week, month after month, year after year, hundreds, thousands of dollars by not pumping uh, energy into, uh, you know, this stuff to try to do something that Mother Nature is going to do for you for free. The next thing I want to talk about, uh, totally jumping ship off of our body, and there are lots of other things that you can uh, talk about on your body, you know, from repairing shoes instead of, like, getting a new shoe if, like, they're starting to fall apart, you know, use shoe goo to, to repair your uh, shoes, or just wearing clothing that is looking a little worn. Uh, today's not a really great example. This is actually one of my nicer shirts, but I wear clothes. Uh, all the time that, uh, you know, they look kind of worn and it's like, you know, I don't sweat it, you know, who cares if I'm offending you by wearing a, cl a clothing that looks a little faded, suck it up, buttercup, I don't care. You know, uh, people spend an awful lot of money on clothing and if you're not buying new stuff constantly or you're doing repairs, you can save a lot of money. But I want to jump ship totally off our body now and talk about something that uh, has a lot of different tentacles on it and that is subscription services. One of them you're probably using right now in my... Uh, I'm getting a little dry throat, so there we go. Uh, one of them you're probably using right now, which is uh, you're either watching this on your phone or you're watching it over like some kind of an internet connection in your house. And both of those are things that you are paying for on a monthly basis. A lot of this stuff, uh, you know, I'm not going to say, uh, you know, go offline because I think the internet is a really valuable resource. It's a great way of getting a lot of stuff for free. So I think it gives you more than it takes away. Uh, you know, that, that said, I mean, there's all sorts of like addiction issues that people get uh, caught up in this. And I suppose it is a bit of a conflict of interest because, you know, I'm doing this channel online and if everyone, everybody went offline, it would be like, uh, you know, no way of, of sharing this information. So I think the, uh, the internet is a wonderful uh, asset, but there are different ways of getting it. Some of them cost a heck of a lot more than others. One of them is, you know, doing this stuff on your phone. If you're watching this on your phone, it means you have some kind of a data plan. And I would, I would ask you to question to yourself, do you need that? And before you, you jump up and say, well, it's a modern age. Everybody need that, needs that. I don't have that. I run, uh, you know, all these, uh, you know, YouTube channels. I have multiple YouTube channels and, uh, I don't have a data plan for my phone. My phone is just a really stupid, uh, dumbed down phone. And I use it to get texts from people that I need to coordinate with. And I use it to get phone calls from people that I need to coordinate with. It is not a part of my emotional uh, makeup. 
of myself as a human being. If my phone breaks, it's an inconvenience, but I don't feel as though like, uh, you know, I've, I've had a major part of my brain shut down. It's, it's not like a crisis level event. It's like inconvenient and, you know, for coordinating with people, but that's kind of the end of it. You can live with a really stripped down phone plan. Uh, one place that you can get these from is TrackPhone. I know uh, I don't personally use a TrackPhone account for myself, uh, no, not for any other reason other than I was able to get a good deal from uh, you know another company. But I know TrackPhones are really great for people who want to just use a phone as a phone, and they're not doing a ton of, of texting and not doing a ton of calling. With TrackPhones, you can get a phone that will you know you kind of charge it up with minutes, and you have a certain number of minutes uh, you know per monthly period, and it's just kind of an ongoing. Uh, uh, fee schedule, but it's a lot lower than a lot of what people are paying. Many people, you know, I, I know people pay, you know, close to or over a hundred dollars easily for their phone plans per month, and you can you can get by pretty pretty easily with like a twenty-five dollar plan or something like that. And you know, if you're saving seventy-five bucks per month, you know, at the end of the year, that's you know, that's getting close to a thousand dollars that you're saving just by you know. If you want to go online, you know, do it when you get home or something like that. If you, if you have internet connection at your home, you know, think about some of these things. A lot of these things are convenient, um, but convenience come at a cost. They come at a financial cost because you usually have to pay for this convenience, but they also come at a, um, a mental kind of cost. I think when we uh, so wrap ourselves in too many conveniences, it makes us kind of soft. It makes us kind of... Um, you know, addicted and dependent on these kind of things. And I think it's good to remind ourselves that we don't always need these kind of things. You know, uh, you don't need 24-7, 365 access to YouTube right here. I mean, if you want to watch my videos, you can wait till you get home. And if you have an internet connection at your home or something like that. So th th these are things to think about. Other other things uh, that are worth thinking about are entertainment uh, subscription services, things like Disney Plus or Netflix. You know, I would love to see all the new Star Wars stuff. Like, you know, the new Andor series is out and like there's the whole Mandalorian series. I'm like a Star Wars uh, buff and I enjoy all that kind of thing. But is it worth it to me? No, it's not worth it to me. And because of that, I, you know, I, I don't pay for subscription services like that. I, maybe someday I will get a chance to see the Mandalorian or someday I'll get a chance to see, uh, you know, uh, you know all, all, all the you know great content is on there, uh, but at the moment I prefer to just save the money and use it for other things, and also save the time and and use that time for other uh, other purposes as well. When you're buying subscription entertainment services, uh, you know not only are you paying financially for them, but you're also paying with you know the amount of time that you're putting towards them. And you know could you be doing better things with that time? Whether you are working on your prep work or working on bettering your life, you know putting in effort to making your life better and stronger. You know coming up with other businesses that you can do or spending time with your family. I know you know you can spend time with your family watching uh, you know The Mandalorian or Andor or something like that. But you can also spend your time, you know, outdoors doing things that are active and those activities that get you up are also giving you physical exercise, which brings me to the next type of subscription service that I want to mention is gym memberships. A lot of people have gym memberships. Some of those gym memberships I think are aspirational. You know, people feel, well, it's like if I, if I get the gym membership, it's like that's, that's one step closer to getting, you know, sh uh, fit and in shape. But there are a lot of other ways of, of staying fit and in shape that you don't have to dump, you know, whatever it costs per month, uh, you know, a lot of these memberships. I know like there's a Planet Fitness kind of chain here in New England. It's like 10 bucks a month. And as far as I'm aware, that's kind of on the low side. There's a lot of them that are a lot more expensive than that. Uh, you know, you can get, uh, you know, fitness and exercise by, you know, taking hikes with your family. That's rewarding. You're also going to get exposed to nature and, you know, there's all sorts of benefits, uh, you know, in terms of like stress reduction that come with that. Uh, you know, it's free to, to go out for, for hikes outside. You can do work. Yeah, you know, I, that, that's one of the ways that I get most of my exercise is just doing, you know, work around the house, whether it's, you know, mowing the lawn or, you know, doing things in the garden or cutting down trees or, you know, all the different things that are required for work out in a homestead. And when I'm cutting down trees for firewood, uh, you know, I am creating income for myself that, you know, I don't have to pay somebody else for that kind of stuff. So it, a lot of these things, when you, you when you cut off one uh, expense, like, you know, Disney Plus or Netflix or something like that, it is going to open up a lot 
a lot of time, unlock that time for you that you can use to save money in all these other different places. Uh, let's see, I, I have a little uh, list for myself so I don't forget all the things I wanted to talk about. So we uh, uh, talked about a lot of different subscription services. One of them is cable television. Uh, I uh, do get, I use a cable television uh, service to get my internet. The only way that I get internet is through my house. I do pay for that monthly. Uh, you know, I kind of use that to, you know, to do this and, you know, the, the, the amount of revenue that I get from YouTube almost pays for, for that monthly subscription. So it's like, you know, it's kind of a break even kind of thing. Um, you know, and, and plus you have all the, the add ons to that. But in terms of cable television, I haven't had cable television in years and years and years and years. In fact, I've never bought it. I think, you know, when I used to live at my parents' house, they, they, they'd had cable television, but I've never actually purchased it myself. And that saves me, again, a ton of money and a ton of time, and I can use that time for other types of things. So let's get away from subscription services. There are plenty of other ones, but, you know, just question to yourself, these subscription services that pop up on your bill every single month, you know, when people have like, uh, like pre-made meal subscription services, uh, you know, and all different kinds of weird uh, different subscription services, you know, question, uh, you know, maybe that one subscription service doesn't cost that much but when you add that to you know the other one and the other one and the other one it can be a healthy chunk of change and especially at the end of the year you add all that up you can be talking about thousands of dollars i mentioned pre-made meals uh, as a subscription service and that i want to get into the idea of you know what people are spending uh for food because there are ways of uh actually this is going to play into it this is tea that I made myself at home. A lot of people will, you know, if they want to get tea or coffee, they'll get it at like, you know, Dunkin' Donuts or something like that when they're out. Uh, but if you make it at home, you can save a ton of money. And that's what you should be thinking about for a lot of your food uh, bills. A lot of people are going to restaurants, they're getting a daily coffee or something like that. Um, and that stuff really adds up. It really adds up. And if you can, uh, you know, come at that stuff from an angle where you are, you know, preparing more things at home and bringing it out, uh, you know, eating more meals at home, uh, you know, you're going to win in a lot of ways. One, you're going to win financially because you're not having to pay all that extra money for restaurants and all these kind of prepared things. Even when you go to the grocery store, there are a lot of pre-made meals that you can find at grocery stores, things in the freezer section. And that might feel like you're going to the grocery store and you're kind of making your own food. But those things, you're paying an awful lot more money for what that thing is than if you put it together yourself. And I know time is an investment as well, but if you're buying the raw ingredients and you're making them at home, uh, you know, you're losing a little bit of time. You could be using that time to earn money a lot of times, but you know, there is a, a benefit to making a lot of food for yourself at home. Again, it can be a family activity or you and your partner doing this together. So it can be more enriching than, uh, you know, just, you know, purchasing this, uh, purchasing this stuff at the grocery store, you're going to be saving uh, money that way. But any way that you can try to get more back down to the basic raw ingredients, uh, you're going to be saving yourself a lot of money over buying these kind of prepared things. And on top of that, the food's going to be healthier as well. <laughs> it depends on how you make it. I suppose you could, you know, you could give them a run for the money, uh, their money and try to make your, your stuff, you know, really full of, uh, full of fats and salts and sugars and all that kind of stuff. But um, that's one thing when you're making your own food is that, uh, you know, if you realize what you're putting into it, you realize what's actually going into your body and you're going to tend to make the stuff uh, more healthy for yourself. So you're going to, you're going to benefit in that way as well. So your health is going to improve, your, your wallet is going to improve uh, and your, your sense of, um, uh, you know, it's the same thing that I get back to when I talk a lot about, you know, building your own house, building your own structure. I build four houses myself, and it, it's a great sense of empowerment when you know that you can do things for yourself, whether that's building yourself a house or building yourself a sandwich, knowing that you can do those things for yourself and you don't require somebody else to put your sandwich together for you. Uh, it is, it's an empowering feeling to just kind of do things on your own and you know that you can get by, uh, you know, on, on, on less. And that brings me to the idea of cookbooks, because one great way of learning about how to cook for yourself is using cookbooks. You can also use your internet connection to get free recipes, um, you know, so you don't have to go out and buy a cookbook. But even if you want to use a cookbook, you don't want to go online, you don't necessarily have to buy cookbooks because, and we're here at the end of this video, you can get a lot of books for free. This is my bag of books that I just grabbed from the uh, library. A lot of public libraries give books away for free. They are always bringing in new books uh, into their shelves and they, they, you know, they've only got so much space. So they're kind of getting rid of a lot of the old books and it's a great way of getting, you know, just free uh, material. You know, you can't really choose what you uh, are presented with there, but if you go enough times, you, you get a really uh, great selection, uh, you know, just over time of all different types of things. And uh, right on the top here, I've got a fish and shellfish, uh, shellfish uh, cooking cookbook. Uh, we cook, um, 
you know, some seafood at our house, and I know that I'm always going online because like, I, I can never remember like the proper cook times for uh, you know you know various types of seafood. If the internet ever went down, wouldn't I be glad that I had this? And two is one, and one is none. <laughs> and another fish cookbook right there. I think did they even have any more? No, two is one, and one is none. I got two of those today. Uh, I got a travel guide about Bermuda. Now. Trips are another thing that cost an awful lot of money. And it's nice to be able to take trips and try, nice to take vacations. I'd like to go to Bermuda someday. When I was really, really, really little, I barely remember it. My parents went to Bermuda. They had some kind of a, uh, like a, a discount deal. And I don't remember having ever been there. I was physically on the island once. I'd love to go back there again someday. But just being able, able to read about things, you know, the daydreaming itself is kind of nice. And I have a big section in my library of travel books. You know, for two reasons. One, like I said, it's just fun to kind of daydream and think about it. Uh, and the other reason is if I decided to go to one of these places someday, it'd be nice to have a book so I could get some ideas on what I want to do when I'm there. Another kind of just like, who knew that was going to be there? No one, not me. Uh, this is a great one right here. Reuses. It's a whole book about... Uh, uh, 2,133 ways to recycle and reuse the things you, you ordinarily throw away. And the one that jumped right out at me was uh, burned out light bulbs. I'm wondering what they're going to say about that. Um, if, you're, if you're interested in finding out about that, tell me in the comments below and I'll, I'll let you know. Wow, well, they've got like a, just a, a geodesic dome house in there. It's just, who knows what's going to be in a book like this. And, you know, even if, like I mentioned in this video, if everything doesn't apply to you, maybe there's just a couple things that allow you to save money. Same thing with this book. I don't know, maybe a bunch of this stuff is like, uh, you know, it doesn't apply to me at all. Uh, maybe these are things I don't even have to, to throw away, but it's just, it's interesting to, to think about, wow, oh, somebody built a, a whole house out of bottles of Heineken beer there. So, uh, you know, even if you just get one idea out of these things, I think, uh, you know, it's great having books like that or home repair books. I've gotten a lot of those from the library. This is the one on the French countryside and architecture. I have a section of my library about architecture. I do building and, you know, I like, whenever I'm going to do a new build, I like flipping through books like this, getting different ideas about uh, things I might want to do, uh, do into the build. Educational material in terms of science. These are a couple books, you know, for the science part of our library for my boy, mammals and reptiles and things. I like just having this stuff on, on hand. This is education for me, adults. Coastal navigation. I've done sailing uh, in the past. My dad has his captain's license. And, uh, you know, I, I've done some sailing, though never I was never responsible for any of the navigation. But, I don't know, maybe one day I'd like to do that. Uh, if you guys have watched my channel for a while, you, you know that uh, I did a video about the idea of bugging out on a boat. That could be kind of interesting. And it'd be good to have that reference material if you ever needed it. About horses. You know, if you ever wanted a book about uh, horses, if you're going to, uh, like, uh, like who knows? Maybe we go back to, like, cowboys and Indians and I want to know about horses or just, you know, my boy develops an interest in horses. That way it'll be in the library. Uh, I don't know how what, what the uh, survival uh, benefit of these are, but uh, Velasquez and someone whose name is in French that I can't pronounce, they're art books. They're just books of uh, different art prints. And we have a whole art section of our library. And, uh, you know, I grab those as well. You know, all the stuff doesn't have to be practical. Some of it can be, uh, you know, just enjoyable. You know, if you were trapped in a fallout shelter for two weeks, you're all going to want to have some books to read. Uh, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I've got a, actually a couple versions of this. But whenever I see one, I'll grab it and see if, like, my version's cleaner or better or worse. And I'll, I'll keep the keep the good one and, and uh, pass the other one on to other people. Um got a, a book about the Second World War, about uh, warfare. Uh, it's like uh, Jewish people fighting back called uh, the Avengers. And uh, something about the Lusitania. Uh, my, my boy likes books uh, about uh, Titanic and, and ships and things like that. So there are all sorts of, uh, you know, books that are available for you for free. If you go to your, your public library, just ask if they're giving things away. Uh, and there are just so many things in life. So think about the expenses that you have on a, on a daily or monthly or a weekly basis. And think about the ones that you need and think about the ones that you want. And consider, uh, you know, trimming some of those off. Because as, as we move into the future where we have, um, you know, uh, less access to, to various things, um, I think all of us are going to have to choose between things that we, you know, we used to buy and then we can't afford anymore. And wouldn't it be good to try to make it so that the things that you are not buying anymore are the things that you really don't need? You know, instead of being in that situation where you're having to choose between food and medicine and rent, three things that, you know, people kind of really do need. I, I guess, you know, you can talk about the medicine and how, like, you know, there's natural ways around it and everything. But the idea that, you know, you want to keep your health through whatever, you know, means are required. You want to keep 
your, your stomach full and you want to keep a roof over your head. Those things are more like required. But if you can think about all the things that you don't need and start kind of shaving those things off now, you know, your subscription services, you know, your shampoo and all that kind of stuff, uh, you can make, make it so that if you are going to be trimming stuff out of your budget, it's the stuff that you would choose to trim out instead of the stuff you get forced to trim out. I hope you find that helpful. Think about things uh, that uh, you think that maybe I, I could have talked about in this video that I've forgotten. I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Other people would love to hear them in the comments below. And let's all try to help each other because uh, the, the fewer people that are forced into dire straits, the better things are going to be for all of us, including for us preppers. Yeah, that's one of the big reasons I do this channel is, you know, if there were no other people in the world and, you know, uh, you know, shit at the fan. I didn't have to worry about other people. Uh, that'd be one situation, but we don't live in that world. We live in a world where if the people around you aren't doing that great, it's going to come to your shores uh, sooner or later. So the more we can help each other, uh, the better we're going to make the world for everyone, but our help ourselves included in that. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.